Inside the nucleus of cells are long chains of DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. These long chains are normally folded up into a relatively small space and also consist of two parallel strands which twist round each other in that famous double helix structure. And it's this structure, two strands, which is key to how DNA operates and how proteins are synthesized in the ribosomes of the cell. Now, DNA has been described as being similar to a computer code. That code is not only the key how to build a human, but also how to keep it operating. Like all codes, it has a language all of its own. In the case of DNA, letters of this code are represented by nucleotides, which appear regularly down the length of each side of the chain. In DNA, these nucleotides are cytosine, or C, guanine, or G, adenine, or A, thiamine, T. These nucleotides are loosely bonded to another nucleotide on the opposite strand of DNA. These bonds Basically, this structure looks like the rungs on the spiral ladder, which is DNA. However, the opposite nucleotide isn't just some random letter out of the nucleotide alphabet. Instead, it's a matched pair or a mirror image of what's on the opposite strand. Cytosine pairs with guanine and adenine pairs with thymine. This paired or mirrored structure is the key to how DNA can copy so many different letters of code and yet make relatively few mistakes each time it replicates. Now, when DNA wants to copy itself, basically it kind of unzips the ladder its structure. So basically you have two very long strands, each containing opposite sides of a full DNA chain. These chains are huge. See how it works? Let's say we have an extremely simplified DNA for a cat. Now, for our, the DNA for our, a cat, we need a left-hand string of DNA to be cytosine, adenine, and then thiamine, or C, A, T. Because these have to pair up through the right-hand string, it has to be guanine, thiamine, and adenine, or G, T, A. Maybe for some of you known as grand theft auto. When it comes down to replicating these strings, they separate and you have a left string with C, A, T on it, and a right string with G, T, A on it. Now, each of these strings then has missing nucleotides added to them to complete a normal double helix of DNA. These additional nucleotides, of course, are fitted on to match what is actually on the existing side. So on the left side of the C, A, T, there's a new right side added to it running G, T, A. The existing right side has G, T, A. On the new left side added, we'll have running C, A, T. So where before you had one string left C, A, T and right G, A, T, you now have two strings with hopefully identical patterns. I say hopefully, because whilst pairing up these structure normally goes perfectly, just occasionally the wrong nucleotide is inserted into the chain. And that's where genetic anomalies occur. Mostly, a single error won't result in significant changes to the animal or plant that DNA belongs to. However, sometimes it will have a serious negative impact. The consequences can be dire. Even rarer still, can end up in being beneficial to the owner of the new type of DNA. Now, if these new strands of DNA are harmful to the life of the organism, then it's less likely than its fellows to pass on any changes in the DNA to the next generation, as it's less likely to be successfully breeding. On the other hand, the new DNA is beneficial, is more likely to pass on this DNA than others. Eventually, over many generations, it's likely to become the standard DNA pattern of that particular species. Now, some of you have been watching this and trying to remember for your biology exams and tests exactly how cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine pair up with each other. So, if you take nothing else from this video, always remember let your cat play Grand Theft Auto.